morning how you guys doing tk prior coming at you another grind another grind 3 a.m time is i have to get up every morning to do this 12 hour schedule that everybody's forced to do with this economic world that we live in everybody's mostly comfortable with their schedule whatever it is may not be three o'clock in the morning but it's definitely a schedule and a work to get money so that's what we're programmed to do in terms of participating within the economic space you get a schedule you get a work and then you get money and the average person part of the 99% in terms of people being counted on the planet, that's all they learn about money. Nothing more, nothing less, and that's how they die. Accumulating debt, not living a life of abundance, not really accomplishing, and most likely a prisoner to the debt that they create within their schedule. So here I am, on my schedule, military background, two tours in Iraq, now working as a contractor for the military. So 3 a.m. every day, minus my days off. So my schedule leads to me working and my work leads to me having a paycheck. Now, granted, a paycheck is the highest tax bracket within the uh, Ponzi scheme of fractional reserve banking because the brunt of siphoning money comes from people who have a paycheck, which typically keeps you living paycheck to paycheck until you die. Your own mismanagement, your own lack of understanding of fractional reserve banking, and then finally, your participation in debt. Most people have more bill at the end of their check. And this is the life we lead. And there's no conscious decision to do anything different, to create anything extra. There's no uh, drive anymore. Now that we live in a microwave society, I don't see drive within people's personalities where they want to do extra outside of their nine to five to create more money. I said this in many videos that more money to most people just means a part-time job. Well, if there's 12 hours in your uh, primary job, how many hours in a day to get another job just to get another check? So working smart and doing something more effective to produce money in your life is not a decision that people make. And suggesting effect, uh, excuse me, effective decision-making process, suggesting things that can create uh, income outside a job goes beyond the typical programming that a lot of people subscribe to. You see, the mainstream uh, teaching mechanism within our space is to program you to fail. You believe everything is unobtainable at your level, and thought process is the first step to achieving anything in this world because we are spiritual beings but the world teaches you that we're physical beings so everything happens in three parts it happens in the metaphysical world before it happens in the physical world so your belief or I should say your thought your action excuse me your thought your belief then your action is what creates your reality. So, religion is the 
death spiral of chain control prison that prevents people from understanding their ability to create a reality that they can uh, believe in or even believing in a reality that they can create. So my point to this message is that I'm giving you a little bit of background on why everybody's so fucked up, why everybody's so lazy, why you don't want to do anything or talk about something associated with progress. Because you know that the schedule that you're on isn't going to produce anything other than more debt based on your actions of uh, massive buying materialism and the need to acquire beyond your current budget. Right? So, 1% of the world are taught differently from the masses that are programmed to fail. The people that are labeled with silver spoons in their mouth are taught about money, the fractional reserve banking system, how our monetary system is set up to siphon out. And they position themselves within the funnel in of the, or I should say the point in of the funnel when it comes to siphoning. Somebody said uh, Donald Trump wins the presidential race, then the rich are just going to get richer. Somebody's response to that was, well, just become rich. So the super rich are taught how to make their money get a job, how to effectively use money to make money. And how the monetary system itself is a pyramidal system of power up, siphon up, where the higher you uh, position yourself, the more you're able to accomplish. Now that doesn't mean that within democracy, anyone can't make an individual choice to wake up and do something different. But what it does mean is that people have to think. They have to believe, and then they have to act outside of what everyone else is doing. So I try to encourage that. I try to be an advocate of that. But these are conversations, as I stated, that a lot of people are not receptive to and don't perceive to be important, which leads me to hard assets. I've been on the hard asset revolution from my early years and being taught what an asset is. So you have assets, you have liabilities. Typically, if you describe something that brings money back into your house, it can fall into the asset category. If you acquire something that adds no monetary value to your household and only takes out, it can be described as a liability. So here we go with assets and liabilities and hard assets being something tangible that you can fall back on no matter what. Now, a lot of people have been programmed to believe the paradigm in failure that says that gold is a archaic uh, relic that has only a symbolic meaning when there's no hard evidence to prove that. But the narrative goes, the greatest thing the devil ever, or the greatest lie the devil ever pulled, and you know the rest. But what I say is the greatest thing the devil ever pulled is being able to pull you, period. If you say a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. There's no hard evidence to back up the narrative that gold has no value. Now, typically, you can come from a 
philosophical standpoint of people equating gold to fiat currency. Now, because we live in a monetary system that requires you to pay to live, everyone equates fiat currency to value when value can differ from the price discovery within fiat currency. So you can buy something of high value at low cost and not diminish the value. And that's what I want to point out when it comes to hard assets because people feel like, oh, if it's low cost or oh, if it's high cost, when price discovery can differ from value based on ethics or non-ethics. So gold being applied or uh, equated to fiat currency. Now, a lot of people do not, we live in a microwave society. You don't know how the microwave works. You really don't give a fuck. As long as you push the button and your food is hot, you're happy. So everything in society has that same microwave expectation. So you don't understand the formulative uh, foundation behind physical money exchange when you swipe your credit card. You don't really give a F that there's 14 intermediaries in between taking the money from the swipe POS to your uh, physical bank and then from your physical bank to the bank of the merchant that you swiped at. You know, those are behind the scenes processes that you don't really give a fuck about. And I use harsh language to make harsh points because the fact is there are intermediaries behind gold that set the price. And that price discovery within gold has more to do with paper contracts than it does to do with physical assets. Actual gold supply has little to do with price discovery than the manipulated paper contracts that are leveraged sometimes hundred or thousand to one. So you have things like the Shanghai Gold Exchange that is coming in effect to sort of change the gold price discovery based on physical assets as opposed to based on paper leveraged contracts. So I say all of that to say this, that people, you watching this video don't believe that gold is money. You believe that paper is money. When if you go back to historical point, there was a time when paper represented the receipt for gold that you had on delivery in a vault. So that's what I mean by the greatest trick that the devil pulled was to get you to believe the lie. Because when you historically reference paper as a receipt for gold on deposit in a bank, meaning your paper was a claim check to your physical deposit so that you didn't have to carry around gold and silver, the physical asset, the tangible metal. So the narrative today is that the people watching my video don't believe that gold is money. That tangible assets are worth having. People believe that paper is money. When paper is currency and countries have the right to make currency legal tender. But the problem with currency is that countries manipulate the price and, 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 and uh, valuation of said currency through personal greed. So as paper currency loses value, hyperinflation happens within the economy where it costs more paper money 
or paper currency for you to acquire the things that you want to buy. So all of this conversation talks about one thing and one thing only. How much gold do you own? I'm a member of Carrot Bars because I like the go by the ounce credit card assayed London Bullion Market Association accredited uh, grams that they offer. I'm a member of uh, Swiss Global Gold because I like the price point and so many people are brainwashed to see gold versus price and value versus price. So I have gold on auto ship. I have silver on auto ship from ISN coins, which I'm more into bullion because bullion is what is accepted worldwide for currency. But the key that I hope to pass on to somebody watching this video is acquire tangible assets. Realize that paper money is devaluing based on the monetary policies of the government and that at some point the devaluation will come home to roost to where it affects you.